Cameras going on right now. The volume's here, so I'm just... I have it on fast. And then we need to. Cool. <laughs> if you need to like mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna stay here with you. So, um, I'll just sit on the other side and not Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> so are you able to hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. I am gonna transfer you to my screen for the kids. Um, we don't see you. Okay, hold on a second. The request. Do you see them now? Yes. Awesome. All right, so we're ready. There's stuff popping up in the window. All right, Dr. Bogan. Hi. Or is it? Did I say it right? That's right. All right. Um, are you are you ready? Sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Um, so um, real quick, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Jorge. I work with STEM Connect, and we work to bring experts like Dr. Bogan today at the Central Florida Zoo um, to talk to classrooms around Florida, much like yours. I'm gonna hand it off to to Dr. Bogan. I'm gonna be in the background. If there's any issues, just call for me, and I'll jump back in and try to fix it. Um, otherwise, it's all yours. Okay, so let me switch this. Is there any way to switch it? Because you're in the middle and we can't see oh. the screen. So. Um, <laughs> I have all this stuff popping up on my screen. Is there any way I can close it out without closing you guys? I'm sorry? There's like these windows popping up with like speaker and volume. Um, you can, you should be able to minimize that or if you just click on the um, you can move it to side, or if you just click on the on the on the image of the um, of the doctor, it should make it bigger. Yeah, I minimized it. I lost you. Um, Where are you? Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you you can you move it down to like the bottom of the screen and move it out of the way? Actually, I'm actually trying to find you where we can see you. We can hear you, but we can't really see you. On the bottom, on the start bar, it, there should be there should be a little go-to webinar icon. If you click that, it should it should pop us back up. Where? Where? Come here. <coughs> Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. I guess we'll see you now. All okay, right. what's Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, Dr. Bogan, it's all yours. Yay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hey. <laughs> My name is Dr. Bogan. I'm the veterinarian for the Central Florida Zoo. Uh, botanical gardens, and um, oh, I'm getting some feedback here. It's weird. Somebody got muted. Jim Carroll, can you do dog, cat, horses, cows? Yes. Can you repeat what you said? We kind of lost the connection for a second. Oh, everyone in the class is familiar with veterinarians in general, as far as dogs, cats. Horses, cows, no? Okay. He's asking a question, you guys. If you guys, anybody are familiar with dogs, horses, cats? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in the zoo world, the veterinarian is very similar. Um, we do more preventive medicine than, than what you'll see in, in dog and cat medicine or in horse or cow medicine. 
Um, because a lot of the animals in the zoo field are wild or, or semi-wild and we can't really touch them or do much. So we have to do things from afar. So it's easier to prevent them from getting sick than to try to treat them once they do get sick. And so um, the, the biggest thing for us is, uh, is, is good prevention. And we do that mainly with nutrition. So the nutrition is a, is a hallmark for um, zoo veterinary medicine. Um, preventive exams, preventive care, wellness exams. So we try to look at every animal in the park here at least once a year. Uh, many times we have to anesthetize them or at least sedate them in order to do that safely. And um, when we look at them, we you know, feel their bodies, look inside their mouth, also collect blood samples and try to look at their uh, chemistry values inside their blood because many times they won't show sickness on the outside and especially if they're sedated, they may not react to something painful, but we look for different um, biochemical parameters that may be out of alignment in their blood sample. We'll also take uh, radiographs, look at some x-rays um, to look at their insides that we may not be able to feel or see from the outside. Anybody in the class interested in being a veterinarian? Anybody interested in being a vet? Nope. I mean, one. Nope, one. All right, we got one. Yay. <laughs> Big thing with uh, veterinary medicine, if you're interested in being a vet, you need to make sure you you're study well with your sciences. Science is a big, and uh, so is math. We have to calculate, if you're doing anything with an exotic animal, like in the zoo, you need to calculate uh, drugs based on different uh, body masses. And uh, so you, you have to not only convert it from uh, what you would treat a squirrel, but you have to convert that same drug to what you would treat in a giraffe. And, uh, different concentrations of drugs and different um, routes of administration. So um, you can see here in our treatment room, this is a lot of the toys we have uh, behind me. Um, let me see everything here. I'm going to walk back. We do use an anesthesia machine. So this machine here has uh, will administer anesthetic gas and oxygen to the animals once they're on this exam table. Um, if they're smaller, you put a small mask like this on them. If they're bigger, sometimes we have to invent a mask for them, like a, a, a bear. Sometimes we'll use a big um, soda bottle, like a two-liter bottle. We'll cut the end off and connect it to here and use that as a mask because his face won't fit in this. Uh, we got um, thermal support. A lot of animals get colder when they're under anesthesia. This one, yeah. So you can see here is my... Um, X-ray generator, we use this when we take radiographs, we take an X-ray of the animal. This is portable, again, for the bigger animals that won't fit in here, like the rhinoceros or the giraffe, we'll actually take this to them. I've got um, endoscopy. So this is equipment that we use to look inside the animal. So it's little cameras that we need to look at their nose or down their throat. Uh, some of them can be sterilized and we use them surgically to look inside their lungs or look inside their stomach. And we've got uh, plenty of uh, portable blood machines like this and like this. Yay. Um, and we have ultrasound. So everything happens in this room here uh, for most of our animals' exams. What kind of questions do you have for me? Questions. You got to come over here, like on this side, so he can hear you and see you. So go ahead and stand up, like where Amina is. Like right there. Amina is the point over there. Amina with the black sweater. Yep, there you go. Go, yeah. He can't see you. You gotta go where Amina is. There you go. So I'll ask you a question. Has it ever been stressful taking care of an animal? Yeah, quite often. You get to, if you get an animal who's um, not cooperative, especially if it's a dangerous animal, that could be stressful. Um, we did have a warthog in here, and warthogs have tusks that can raise her edge. Uh, she, was an, she was anesthetized when we had her on the table, and after an hour of working on her, she started to become light in the anesthesia and was starting to move. We have a 300-pound animal inside a building with about six or seven people. You start to get a little nervous, although... We're able to adjust her anesthesia and bring her back down. But yeah, that can be stressful when you're worried about 
something that could kill you <laughs> wake up in your room. So. Oh, Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Raise your hand. Just raise your hand if you have a question. You have to have your questions answered. The Any questions? <laughs> Give me multiple choice. So, Lenson, you have a question? Go ahead. And then you're next, um, Rodney. I mean, Rashad. Have you ever thought of quitting? Have I ever thought of quitting? <laughs> uh, no. Sometimes when it's really long and I'm here at seven o'clock at night still and I want to go home and eat dinner, yeah, but no. No, this is uh, the best job there is. Nice try, though. <laughs> Rashad, I think he, no, he can't see you, so get us in that. Move in. There you go. Now ask a question. <laughs> um, how old do you want to be? Um, uh, uh, like how old was he when he wanted to be a veteran? When he figured it out? Oh, how much longer he wants to work in the field? Okay. Uh, hopefully another forty years. <laughs> yeah, this is an awesome job. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of my life. It'd be great. Census table. Quickly. Okay, come on. Go to the back. Okay. Oh, he can see you. Okay, go ahead. At what age did you know you want to be a veterinarian? That's a good one. I was in sixth grade, seventh grade. I decided I wanted to be a veteran. That's when I decided I, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, then um, I looked into it. I actually got a job in high school working for a veterinarian. And that made me like it even more. Um, if you're interested, you need to obviously finish high school. Then you go to college, get your bachelor's degree. Once you get your bachelor's degree, then you apply to veterinary college and go an additional four years. If you want to do zoo medicine, you need to do an additional one to three years internship after that. And after the internship, you need to do a two to five year residency. So lots of school after high school if you want to be a zoo vet. If you want to be a dog cat vet, eight years. If you want to be a zoo vet, 12 years. Yay. Cool. <laughs> yes, you got to get in the, okay, he can see you. What made you want to be a veterinarian? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. What made you want to be a veterinarian? What made you want to be a veterinarian? Well, I've always enjoyed science, and um, I like the idea of helping animals. Um, I had thought about going into human medicine, but um, it, I don't think there's much of a challenge in human medicine. You've got one species, and where uh, veterinary medicine, you've got multiple species. Now, if you're a dog, cat, you got two species. If you're a large animal, you might have uh, horse, cow, goat, sheep, chicken. You know, I mean, five species, if you're doing exotics, you can have dozens and dozens of species. You start working in a zoo, you've got scores of species that you need to be up on. And I, I enjoy that challenge. Go ahead, Rashad. How do you treat your Oh, oh, we... oh, no. Are you there? Can you hear us? Oh, they froze. Oh, okay. I, I hear you now. Okay. So um, we read a little bit about your history, and we read that you started a reptile um, organization or hospital, and he's asking, why did you shoot that field? The... Uh... 
with reptiles. Um, I chose uh, some spe subspecialization in reptile species because they are some of the more challenging. Um, their physiology is, oh, did I cut out? Can you hear me? Maybe. No, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, so uh, their physiology is, is, is so different and that makes the medicine um, very challenging and uh, it's, a, it's a cutting edge field so we can be kind of a pioneer in that, in that way. I'm sorry. Okay. It's something to work with, you know, with reptiles, it's very diverse, everything from turtles, whether they're gopher tortoises or sea turtles, to uh, lizards, to snakes, including venomous snakes, you got the cobra or a mamba. Um, so that's fun. A little dangerous, but that's fun. Antonio, go ahead. What made you interested in reptiles? I just answer that one there. That's it's just the diversity in, in the in the reptile species. Yeah, you know, they've got um, you got to change your way of thinking because they are cold-blooded and not warm-blooded. So a lot of the aspects of their of their medications are different. Go ahead. What is the biggest mistake you've made in what you learned? I couldn't hear that. What was the biggest mistake you've made as a vet and what did you learn from it? Biggest mistake was getting on this phone call. No. <laughs> um, biggest mistake. Gosh. I think some of the biggest one of the biggest mistakes I had was um, not following my dream initially. You know, um, I started uh, my family right out of school, and of course I need to make more money. And you make more money in private practice treating dogs and cats than you do uh, working in a zoo field. And um, I end up working dogs and cats initially, and exotic animals, reptiles on the side. Uh, I think if I had to do it over again, I would have just went straight to that. So that'd probably be my, my biggest mistake is not actually following my dream initially. Thank you. Go ahead. He's asking, do you love your job? Can you hear us? Rose, um, let me see if he can if he gets back. Are you? Did you hear the question, Dr. Bogan? No, I didn't hear the question. It was um, do you love your job, right? Yeah, yeah. I answered that. Did you hear me? Yes. No, you froze. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. He has it actually. Yeah. Um, she asked if you have been attacked by an animal. I've been attacked by an, I've been attacked by a house cat. Um, I've been attacked by um, a chihuahua. I've not been attacked by anything in the zoo. Uh, fortunately, you know, we do a lot more safety precautions in the zoo. We'll we'll take every um, we try to remove all the risks uh, beforehand. We do protected contact with the with the dangerous animals. So, um, if I need to give an in, a treatment to say a bear, I will anesthetize it before I, I have to do anything with the bear. And um, the bears are are trained to come to the edge of their enclosure, and I can give them injection uh, through the side. They're they're trained to get a treat if they happily accept the injection. So that's really nice. They'll come over, I just give them a shot. They lay down, they're anesthetized, they fall asleep, and then I can safely go in and lessen the risk of being attacked if they're not moving. So uh, it's been a lot safer here at the zoo. Okay, go ahead. Have you ever wanted to do something else? He said no. He answered that. He answered that. He did. Yeah, no, I don't want to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. All right, we'll do two more questions, Dr. Bogan. Okay. Has anyone ever doubted you? Has anyone ever doubted me? 
Uh, yeah, you always have people that that will um, question you, and, <clears throat> and that's fine. You know, everyone everyone has different opinions. There's different ways to take care of different um, maladies or or issues, and so there's not always one right way. And so it's it's good to be open minded and hear other people's opinions and um, and formulate a, a plan together if someone is 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 opposed to what you're doing if they've got sound reasoning you can recalculate or if you might be able to then um, tell them your, your behind your your ID uh, they may come around and see what where where you're coming from so yeah I've, I've had a couple incidents but um, usually you you meet on happy ground in the middle. Anybody? I do have a question, Dr. Bogan. In your field, how important is it to work in a team? Those team skills. Yeah, uh, it's extremely important. I, um, you know, when you're dealing with dangerous animals. You need to rely on on uh, multiple people in the team. So, if like if I have to look at a cobra, I have to rely on the person who takes care of the cobra knowing how to safely restrain the cobra so I don't get bit, because I wouldn't want that. Um, and uh, that makes for a bad day. Okay. It's, so you rely heavily on, on the, on the yeah, um, everyone from facilities who maintains the grounds to, to make sure that there's no you know, trip hazards when you're not paying attention, you're walking, watch, you watching an animal, you don't want to be following, um, to the super staff who who um, is, is an extra set of eyes and ears, and they're paying they're paying attention to their animals every day, and can relay information to me, to the uh, training staff who trains them, like trains the bears to come to the side so I, they can safely get an injection, um, to technicians who help monitor uh, vital parameters while the animals are anesthetized. So if I'm busy doing my exam, I have an assistant who's watching the heart rate and respiration and blood pressure and all that. So um, it is a team approach. Yeah, it's very important. Thank you so much. Um, we are really, really thankful that you were able to do that. Um, if you were to give them two pieces of advice if they were thinking of this career, what would those be? The biggest thing is uh, study, um, especially your sciences and math. It's one of the things that a lot of people don't know. <laughs> It's very tough, and you want to give up. Uh, don't give up. That's what you really want. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. Thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Bogan, for coming in and talking to them. Thank you so much for joining in on the session this morning. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a good day. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right.